Hi, in this video, we're going to add a database to a web application in ASP.NET. The point is, we're going to add a database of users so that we can log in with one of many different accounts. So that's right up. Looking at this application as we left it in the previous video, you can see that we have a login success that tells us that admin and secret are the credentials to get into the application. In this video, we're going to add a database so that we can choose somebody besides admin. So in this video, we're going to need a database. Well, we don't really have to install the database. It's already built in here in Visual Studio. Let's go check out the view menu and see what's under there. There's an item called SQL Server Object Explorer. Let's select it. So this SQL Server is running already. And we notice that we have a couple of different databases or different servers running here. The first one is labeled as local, uh, MS SQL. And then the other says Projects V13. And so what I understand is that that is like a backup. It's a live backup of what we're doing. So we're going to ignore that one. We're just going to use the first item. Let's go open up the folder and select databases. And you can see that we have a couple of things here that are administrative in nature and we don't need to touch them. So in the databases folder, I want to make a new one that I'm going to save the data to. So let's choose right click and add new database. So since this is a test, I'm going to just call the database test. And you can see it gives us a path where it's saved. So Keep note of that if you need to go delete it or find it later. So let's go see what's in the database. Let's open up the test folder and there's a whole bunch of stuff. Let's look in the tables area. That's where we're interested in. Let's go ahead and create a new table. So I'm going to select tables, right click, and choose add new table. So we can add a table here and give it some properties. So let's start with username and the data type I'm going to select from the list here. Let's try varchar50 and varchar50. So that's a, a way to limit the number of characters in the username to 50. Let's do the same for password. Let's select 50 for that as well. So as we create these new column definitions at the top of the screen, you can see the generated SQL code at the bottom. So you can see the name of the table that I'm creating is simply table. Let's change that to something like users. And let's see how that works. Let's go ahead and click the update button. You can see up in the top left corner, it's the word update. It's like they're trying to hide the uh, OK button somewhere, it looks like. Let's go ahead and choose update the database. All right, so I get success messages at the bottom. And you can see that the users table now exists over on the right side. So we could do a right click and choose view data and it will do a SQL statement and select everything. Let's do our own SQL statements. Let's go to the database test and right click and choose new query. So new query will allow us to insert data as well as find data. Let's start off with a simple one. We'll select star from users and we'll click the green execute button. And it says there's no data. Well, that's no surprise. Next, I'm going to try to insert somebody into the users table. So we'll type in insert into users. And then in parentheses, we have to tell it the column names that we're going to update. So username, comma, password. And then the values. And I'll invent somebody called Max. And his password will be password1. Let's go ahead and click the green arrow again. So it looks like we have an error down here. We have a message that says you cannot insert this item into the table. It says uh, it does not ha allow nulls. So what I forgot to do was set this to be an auto increment value. So let's go back into our table and right click the users table and choose view designer. So here we go with our use, use designer. So you can see that not null is, is unchecked. So if I say, well, just give me a null and uh, see what happens. It probably won't work. Let's go ahead and update it. And it says you can't do that. Your primary key has to have a value. So that didn't work. How do I set this to auto increment? What I need to do is right click on here and choose properties. The properties window pops up down here. 
So, for ID, I need to go look at identity specification. Let's do a plus sign there. Is identity. Let's change that from false to true. And now you can see identity increment is set to 1. And identity seed is set to 1. So that means the first item in my table will be automatically numbered as a 1. And the increment will also go by 1. So you can change that to anything you want, actually. But 1 and 1 seems to make sense. Now what did they add to the code up here? Simply a single word called identity. And we could optionally have specified to say 1 and 1 as the actual values for the uh, update. All right, so let's choose the uh, update option and click update the database. And it uh, looks like it was successful. Let's go back into our query. And this time, we should be able to update. So go ahead and click the green arrow. And it says we have executed successfully. Well, did I see anybody? I just, it's empty still. Well, let's, let's go ahead and uh, do another. I'm going to reverse these. I'm going to cut that out and put it down below. And instead of Max, let's come up with another one. Let's say Penny and now Max are both going to be in the database. So let's go ahead and click the green arrow again. This time you can see that Max and Penny are both listed in the database. So we've got a database working. So now we're going to go back to the code and write some SQL statements to be able to pull out the users from the tables and then eventually add new users as well. But uh, let's do that in the next video, so stick with me.